there everyone this is Chris with peace of mind and today I'm going to introduce a new um, slow stitch kit that I've been working on and it is called the beach house um, this one will come with a with a pattern the same as the um, if those of you that are familiar with one of my other slow stitch kits that I call the English cottage that came with a pattern also um, you can just use this pattern as a general reference or you can go buy it exactly however you want it however you want to do it but I'm going to show you how to get started on this one um, my kits do not come with like specific instructions I ask that you refer to my YouTube videos and that way you can see the instructions right on there and so that's what I'm going to do today I'm going to get started on this. Um, we will be doing, this will probably be a two or three part uh, series on this particular kit. Those of you that are unfamiliar with my kits, they do come with, and I'll show you what one looks like. You can go, you can also go to my, um, my Etsy shop and uh, take a look at which ones I have. This is the Christmas one. They come with a um, a background of the muslin which is um, eight this particular one is six by nine some of them like this one is six by eight so some of them are six by eight piece muslin some of them are six by nine these are a little bit bigger uh, the, the ones with the English cottage and the beach house but they come all packaged up and ready for you to start sewing you get your thread you get some uh, little trinkets beads buttons uh, usually a charm or two this one has a little reindeer charm then you get bits and pieces of fabric lace uh, sparkly fabric on the Christmas ones some ribbons everything you need to make a 8 by 6 or a 9 by 6 piece of uh, slow stitch and you can use these on the front of books, journals. You can use them as a wall hanging. Some people put them together into a like a diary of their slow stitching. And they put them together into a book. And uh, it's just really fun. Slow stitching is, is really fun as those of you who have started doing it know. So... This kit should be available. I'm going to try to have it available by the time this video airs. If not, then shortly afterwards. Okay, so what I did was I I designed the pattern myself. So <clears throat> basically what I did was I, I made the, um, the pattern after I had made the pieces to put down on here. And the, the pattern is pretty much just for you to 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 fall to so you know where to cut out you don't have to use these specific uh, locations if you want to move the house down further you can if you want to <clears throat> excuse me have have more garden area or less garden area however you want to do it it's it's up to you excuse me while I get a drink and then we'll start I am going to use a glue stick to tack down the pieces and I already have uh, used this um, glue stick on some on some of the pieces the house I've already glued down um, and so I'm gonna just get get started and glue down some of the other pieces and and talk as I go as far as what which ones they are these uh, little flower pieces I've already uh, glued down I think I'll glue glue down this uh, or tack down I should say this uh, grassy area which is, the green area which is the garden now if you <clears throat> there's many uh, things that come with the kit and you can also use some of your own or you can just do this all on your own if you're uh, savvy enough which some of you are I'm sure Okay, so I glue that down. The house, like I said, the house is glued down. I do want to glue down the deck. 
so I'm going to uh, glue that down so it runs along the front runs along the front of the house as you as you may know start with the things that are in front and then you put things in the background so when you start gluing down make sure you leave like for on the house for instance I left an area um, actually I haven't even glued down the house I thought I had I left an area to put the parts that are in the back so let me take these these pieces off and we'll put them we'll put them down as we go this is just the prep and then you will do the slow stitching on top of this and the the reason I use the um, the glue stick is because I want it to uh, stay stable enough for me to stitch on it and I don't like pins all over the place I just it it bothers me I sometimes prick myself with the pins or they just catch on the thread you know all that kind of stuff so this works the best I would I would use just the glue stick don't use uh, any other kind of glue because it may it may be too thick to sew through and this once it dries it'll be fine you, you can just glide through the fabric this piece that I have on the top is a piece of uh, sky fabric and believe it or not they make fabric that looks like a sky. Let's see. Let's see if I have it so I can show you the whole, the whole piece. Well, no, I don't. I have it elsewhere. Okay. As we go. Oh, I know what I was talking about when I was talking about that tacked down. These little windows I have tacked down already. Okay, I am going to lift this this house up and since I have it generally where I want it I'm going to go ahead and put and I just need to tack it down in the center in the center part so I don't need to worry about the sides yet because I'm going to slide things under it so the first thing you will do when you when you start your kit is determine what pieces you're going to use for the for the house, for the roof, and so on. You can let me know um, in your notes when you order a kit from me. You can let me know if you require a certain type of fabric that you saw in the video, or if you want a certain color for the house, for instance, or you know things like that um, a, a, a couple of choices um, I'll try my best to go along with that I am going to tack down these little flowers on the bottom here right now because they keep coming off and I want to avoid that from happening now in this case these are like like white roses down here on the bottom I am also going to uh, put on some shells down here but this is this is the road going up to the to the house and then I guess you could park there or whatever this is the path leading up back to the the ocean okay let's uh, let's, let's tack this down this is the the ocean now when I when I send out my kits I try to include uh, big enough pieces for you to cut out your items now like I said the all the the fabric won't be the same for each kit but there should be enough choices that you can I'm trying to get this so it so it goes over to the side here. This is the land. Okay, so here's here's the ocean, then here's the land. 
don't worry about too much about placement because you can always because you'll be sewing over this covering over it with um, thread so you can always always fix that as you go okay so that is that piece then let's see I am going to put the other side on here first I think I'll put the roof on I did go in and you can do this too I have some um, some pens that are uh, they're Faber Castell they're artist pens and you can go in and draw with them let me just show you here um, maybe I'll just put a few little dots in here to represent some flowers in the garden some over here now I can I, of course and I will use French knots to make the little flowers but if you want to make some details like say around the around the doorway these are great for that and then you can always go back in and just stitch around that to secure it down I don't use pens too much, but if I have like a, a real little small detail that I want to get, sometimes I sometimes I use them. I did, as you can see, probably see, I did use little tiny dots. Let's see. Where's my pen? Here it is. I used a a Sharpie roller, which is a very, very thin Sharpie, and I made dots on the part that's the sand. You could also, and I will try to find a, a sand fabric, but I don't have one right now. So that's kind of what I what I use to delineate the sand. Okay. Let's see what I, oh I need to put the the other side on here for the for where the ocean is. Let's put it here. It doesn't have to be, you know, exactly even with this because, of course, it can. The ocean is not straight across and if you want to add any more details to the house you can do that um, see I think I might draw and then stitch around I think I should have like a little window up here this could be maybe the the loft area there and if I wanted some window boxes down here or if I just wanted to uh, to draw the grids in the window see these windows will be these windows will be open a little bit and I can do that and then as I go, as I stitch, I can stitch some some of these areas. Okay, oh, I need the need the land back here.
Okay, and then of course you can, this overlaps here, but I would just kind of leave that for right now. Overlap just a tiny bit, because you can always cut that down later. Okay, so now I'm going to show you on 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 the fence. Uh, you'll notice on this little fence down here, that's probably like a a sand fence. There's little usually they're brown at the ocean. So I just drew that in. You you don't have to. Uh, uh, you can embroider it later. I, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with it, so I just drew it in. I do have. <clears throat> Excuse me. On the pattern, I do have a piece included that is is here on the pattern. And basically what it is, is it's, you decide what color you want the fence. Mine is going to be white. Or you could use brown or black or whatever color you want the fence to be. Then you cut out a piece of fabric about this shape. And then you can... Uh, let me see, I think I have one cut out. And then you can put it down where you want the fence. And as you probably know, a fence will get, as you, as you get closer to you, a fence will get bigger. And then as you go away, it will get a little bit smaller. And the fence post will get a little bit uh, smaller also. Okay, so I'm going to, let's see. And this was really, really difficult to cut because what I did was I, let me take this out of the way a second. What I did was I drew the fence with my fine Sharpie on this part of the, the, uh, muslin piece that I had, the white piece that I wanted the fence to be white. <clears throat> and then I cut out all these little notches in here to make it look like a fence. And you'll notice it's not by any means even or, you know, even. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm looking at this. I'm going to cut this a little bit more. Make it a little bit thinner. And see how at the beginning of the fence, this fence post is longer than as you go, you get you get a little bit shorter and shorter. And you can even cut them off as you go. Okay. So, like I said, this fence is going to be kind of tricky. But if you want to embroider the fence in, that would work too. That would really, especially if you wanted like a, a brown fence or something, you could use the, the brown floss and embroider it in. Okay, so I've already figured out where this, basically what happens is this opens. This opens here at the deck so you know so you can walk up on the deck and then get into the house that way okay so I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of glue on on the fence I'm going to put this one down And I made this so that if I wanted to, I could cut off some of the, I didn't glue it all the way down. I could cut off some of this bottom part of where I put flowers back behind the fence. Just to have something to kind of peek through since that's part of the garden. Okay, so I like that. Let's glue down this one. And we'll move down this side. Gonna watch on my how long this video is. I don't want it to be too long for the first one. 
what I'll do is I'll finish gluing this stuff down, which I'm almost finished with that. And then I'll um I'll come along and I'll start slow stitching it and I'll show you that also. Now if you want a piece of fabric in where this where this road is, then you can put that in now as well. And all you have to do is on your pattern is cut out the road and make it a little bit bigger so that it would fit under the garden, for example, if you want this to be a different color. I'm just going to work with mine being the muslin color and maybe try to do some stitching in it to see if I can get it to look like a road. Okay, since this is a garden, I might want some more flowers. Each kit will also come with some of these little shells that we can sew down. I'll, I'll probably sew them down to the bottom here. And I also might try some some of these uh, these shells and stuff down here. <clears throat> They're kind of big for the the size compared to the size of the house and so on. But sometimes I don't care about that. If I'm making a folk art piece, I don't have to worry about that. But I think I will use these little tiny shells. And you can also use little buttons and beads and so on that have that look like flowers. If you want to add to the garden. And uh, let's see, for a time I'll try to include some of this uh, this ribbon rose trim that I got. See what it looks like there's... There we go. And I will tack that down. I might put a little pin in that just to hold it in place for now. Yep, let's make it. I think I, did I put, the, no, I was going to say, I think I put the fence upside down, but no, I didn't, but I am going to cut this part of it off, because that was too tall there. Okay, I'll just set that there for now, you get the idea. Okay, so, thank you for joining me for this part, and I will be back for another part shortly. Um, Like I said, I will have this kit in my shop and I try, I'm trying to get it in as soon as this one airs so sometime around Thanksgiving I think so take care